Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host Jinx and we are joined as always by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. See a ton of the good ones in here today for sure. Uh, we'll go ahead and start things off with uh, Art, uh, Fred, Gabby, any updates on the Grove side y'all want to let everybody know about? Nothing on my side, thanks. Um, I have a couple quick ones. So one, uh, we relisted Solana Custom on chain yesterday. So I think everybody saw those relays. We're really excited to come back up on chain and we're very thankful to those brave node running souls out there who are rising to the challenge. So thank you very much. Deeply appreciated and we're really excited to bring it back in quick fashion. Um, in addition, um, Celestia Archival is coming very soon. Um, we're just working on finalizing the docs. This one's going to be a little bit different. So we wanted to make sure that we were very clear on what the expectations were going to be before we launch it on the Grove portal. So more to come there. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll keep you guys posted as we make progress. That's all I got. Beautiful. And uh, Zach, updates on the foundation side? Uh, just a couple uh we've got a vote up under governance if you guys want to jump in it's for appointing appointing ben as a director um there's only been a few votes so please go ahead and vote if you have one and i think this was mentioned last week in the builders call but um it'll be obviously a lot more public after this but uh mateo is uh moving on from the foundation so we'll no longer be in the role of like technical product manager um and shane from the community is going to be moving into uh, take on some of that work, definitely a very different role than what Mateo was brought in to do, but Shane will work a lot more closely with the protocol team. And um, I almost think of it as a little bit of like DevRel and support between the community and the protocol teams. So that way they can um, make sure, yeah, there's a lot more there. And, and Shane, I guess I, it's an opportunity for you to take a minute if you want to talk a little about that, not to put you on the spot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really just, just my my goal is to uh, tackle everything that uh, would prevent the protocol team from uh, focusing on the ones and zeros, so the actual development itself. So ideally, they focus on development, uh, and I'm able to kind of take on some of the comms, some of the community coordination, uh, you know, help with, uh, uh, like, one thing I'm I'm kind of working through right now is, is the parity check between Shannon, uh, between Morse and Shannon, and, you know, looking through what what exactly that transition looks like uh, and how it can impact on the community. So those are the kind of things I'm, I'm looking through right now. Um, and uh, I'm involved in a lot of the kind of protocol meetings to get notes and figure out where I can be helpful and, and useful uh, and then what parts can be, uh, you know, easily brought into uh, the community to, to have community participation or, uh, you know, or just to even help communicate to the community what's been going down on the protocol side. So, uh, yeah, happy to give a, a little protocol update as well. Um, uh, basically, yeah, protocol they're 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 crushing it uh, right now. They're focused on getting uh, to the latest and greatest uh, Cosmos SDK, um, and that's that's something that they're hoping to to finish by the end of uh, this week. The beauty of this is we're already starting to organize a uh, kind of like a test net. I, I almost see it a little more like a dev net uh, in terms of it, it's going to probably have a lot of iterations, um, but ideally getting some community node runners running the new Shannon full node so they are able to do tests, test features. There's It's expected that it's not going to be, uh, that there's going to be bugs basically, but this having community members involved on the node side will actually help them uh, focus specifically on uh, bug fixing and allow community members that are already skilled with running nodes uh, and running infrastructure uh, take on the role of running the actual, uh, you know, test net, alpha test net, if you will. So a lot of cool things happening, um, but yeah, that's kind of the position I'm, I'm in. So if anyone has, questions uh, regarding Shannon or uh, anything really of that nature, uh, kind of on the more technical side, I'm, I'm doing my best to get as absorbed as possible in what they're working on. And then I can 
kind of handle a lot of those, uh, yeah, coordinations or question uh, tasks while they continue just solely focusing on the code itself. Nice. I'm glad to hear it, Shane. Uh, given your experience uh, with the, the ecosystem itself and your, you know, responsiveness and general uh, participation in the community, uh, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn by saying that I'm 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 happy that you're the one stepping into Mateo's role. I, we never really had much interaction with him. Yeah, yeah I'm and, happy to, to to help out in kind of a, a more specific role. Same. Yeah, and I'm really excited to have Shane on the team too, specifically for that reason to be a better bridge between the community and the protocol stuff, which I think we've all seen him do a great job of. So um, expect Shane to be leading the builders calls going forward. Um, well, co-leading it, I suppose, Shane, news to you. But um, yeah, he's going to be a good resource. So definitely feel free to tag both of us in any questions you have, because um, obviously Shane has more technical knowledge. And then um, I think our, our relationship, Shane, is you are still um, working for DA. Um, you're not part of the foundation, but you're going to be a bridge between a, a lot of different parties here, right? Yeah, I'm I'm technically a contractor, so I'm not uh, joining as like you know part of the board or or, or you know joining under fully a PNF um, uh, kind of position. I'm I'm basically a contractor uh, in terms of the official structure, but um, I'm kind of taking on responsibilities. Uh, essentially, you can see it as PNF outsourcing uh, responsibilities. Um, for helping with the protocol team uh, to, yeah, to myself. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm not official like PNF and, th and that still allows me to participate in the DAO uh, the way that I, you know, typically participate uh, and and am able to uh, do things like, like my brother is a fantastic developer. And so I, a lot of times I take on grants uh, to help him and keep him working with inside the ecosystem. And so uh, I'll still be kind of operating on that level as well. Uh, with grants and things of that nature to, you know, ensure that, uh, you know, he's able to keep developing while, uh, you know, I'm also contributing on this uh, kind of project management uh, side as well. Yeah, I think this is a good example of of where outsourcing to the community uh, is is a strong move. If we look at like Ethereum Foundation, for example, uh, you know, the vast majority of Ethereum development work is done by Ethereum community members. And I think that that's a uh, that's uh, um, a healthy uh, way to approach uh, protocol development, in my opinion. Cool. Any other questions about that? All right. Well, in that case, uh, we have uh, OX Thresh joining us today to uh, talk about some uh, uh, funding type stuff, a socket in particular, I believe. So I'll give you the mic. Great. Thanks, Jinx. Uh, nice to meet you all. I have not been to a community call before, but my name is Thresh. Uh, I am with DeveloperDAO, who has been doing a lot of other work with the Pocket Network for documentation updates and some dev tooling and that kind of stuff. So I kind of heard about all of the efforts that were going on through a couple of the people at DeveloperDAO and um, kind of have a different skill set than a lot of the people who are contributing today. A lot more front-end work and doc update type of work is going on from the folks that have been working with Pocket so far. I am actually a DevOps engineer and have a lot more like infrastructure knowledge and um, kind of want to start contributing to Pocket where I see some gaps with some of the existing documentation, specifically around like operating nodes and maybe opportunities to create some dev tooling for the nodes and basically try to make the lives of node operators a little bit easier. Um, I've noticed a lot of tooling that is out there that already does a great job, but there's a few areas that I'm thinking could be helpful to kind of keep bridging the gap between mm -hmm. what's there today and what could help node operators scale their infrastructure even further or deploy nodes in new ways that are hopefully easier to maintain or allow them to run even more nodes than they were before. So right now I'm just kind of trying to get a general idea of what some of the biggest pain points are for 
the existing node operators and what types of tooling would be really helpful for you all to have that you might be missing today or maybe you've written something that you're kind of using for yourself but it's a little janky and you don't really want to share it out to everybody because it might not work very well um, in its current form so i'd love to start talking with everybody who's running some of these nodes and um get an idea of what some of your pain points are today and what type of tooling and documentation we might be able to create uh, to kind of help you guys out and make that a little easier going forward. So great to meet you all and looking forward to chatting much more in the future. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I, I wanted to um, just reference that uh, we had a rough discussion about some R&D around tooling stuff. I created a thread in the forum that was called Pocket Labs. Uh, there didn't seem to be a lot of interest in it, so I've just kind of let that sit where it is. But we talked about some of the things that I thought were maybe some important priorities for tooling development, uh, mostly API middleware stuff uh, that, that we don't have in place now, especially uh, in regards to Shannon when that, when that uh, goes live. Um, so it's you know I think this is a great initiative and um, I am uh, uh, very very much in support of, of what you're trying to do. Yeah, awesome. I'll definitely take a look through that and see what's in there. Just to give a kind of quick idea or two of stuff that I'm thinking of as well. Like I've seen that a lot of the existing tooling to help node operators along is kind of designed to help you run like an individual node. I've noticed in Pocket's GitHub repositories that you guys do actually have some Helm charts, which is basically how you deploy nodes on Kubernetes. So um, I'm wondering if there's some opportunity to like maybe increase some documentation around that and maybe do like a tutorial or workshop or something like that just to allow people to have the resources to maybe start deploying nodes that way as well. Um, so, you know, just a few ideas, um, but excited to see what other tooling people are excited to see and we'll keep working through it. Hey, George. Thresh, where do you want people to reach out to you? Like, is our should we spin up a channel? Should they DM you? I think my intention is to actually get a socket up at some point in the near future. And I've seen that whenever a socket does come up, you guys create like the thread for that. Um, so maybe that would be an easy way to do it. I can also hop into the forum discussion and um, talk about the ideas that I have in there and see what other things have been suggested. But I'm also happy to receive, you know, Discord DMs if you want to reach out to me directly. But um, I also have Telegram and can share that out in the chat. But yeah, I'm happy to be reached out to pretty much wherever I pay attention to a lot of that stuff pretty frequently. So excited to hear from y'all. Beauty. Other, any questions about that? Other people uh, interested or want to add their two cents there? Yeah, I think I think with a uh, uh, with a socket like this, um, it'll be it'll be you'd probably get the most value out of it. Uh, looking at uh, er, early on, looking at Shannon um, once once we kind of get a, a a test net going, um, the protocol team has done uh, a, a pretty good job of putting together. A lot of deployment tools uh, for deploying uh, Shannon nodes. So yeah, so really, where I would see this probably getting the most value is focusing on uh, Shannon kind of early on. Now, like I said, we're we're hoping to release kind of an early version of a of a of a test net um, probably by next week. Uh, but but that you know that that's nothing to fully base anything off of yet. Uh, but as it progresses, um, you know, kind of the, I guess you, you could see the process is first we're going to test the nodes themselves uh, and, and kind of the basic infrastructure and then test things like gateways uh, and then kind of progressively tackle different parts of the, the new protocol to, uh, you know, fully vet everything. Uh, so it's going to be a progressive test net, if you will. Um, but that would likely be the best way to start. If if you're building stuff around V0 and, and current deployment, um, that's going to be very short-lived in terms of the, the value of tooling. Uh, so it would definitely be best to focus on uh, Shannon, which will, you know, it'd probably be good to connect in like two or three weeks 
and kind of see where things are at there. And then I could help direct you to maybe where there might be gaps uh, with with what the current protocol team has released. Awesome. Yeah, that all sounds great. Question for you on that is a lot of the test net testing going to be done like like, is that something that the foundation or that the uh, protocol team is going to kind of do in closed channels and then just give like regular announcement updates? Or is that something that other people can kind of like hop into Discord and watch them do some of that? Or are they kind of keeping it more behind the scenes for right now? Great question. So actually, just this morning uh, was was uh, working with Zach to get permission set up in uh, Discord here. Um, but I'm going to be setting up a uh, channel now. You can actually, I believe you should be able to see, uh, or correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Zach, is the uh, Shannon launch, is that supposed to be, uh, is that whole category going to be read-only for the, uh... anyways, I can work, I, I can work it out, but uh, it's going to be a read-only channel. Uh, so we're going to have a read-only channel uh, to start off with, so anyone in the community can track the progress being made um but uh the uh so we're going to onboard very specifically probably two uh node runners to help kind of kick this off uh and this will be great because then the protocol team can be very uh focused specifically on just working with two parties to kind of work out some initial uh any initial kinks and any initial bugs uh, and then ultimately progressively open up the test net to more and more participants. So it will be followable and trackable inside of uh, the Discord here uh, in a read-only uh, read only state. And then, you know, if anyone, you know, for people that are particularly interested in, in helping with certain mainnet uh, or certain Shannon elements, definitely reach out to me because we're gonna be, you know, looking to onboard parties in a progressive way to, tackle new things as as things progress so um but most most of the testing should be able to be read only uh here in the discord so that'll be awesome for someone like yourself to kind of track see how things are going um and then see what libraries people are using and then that can definitely inform you with kind of looking you know looking at the bigger picture and seeing where there might be value to add awesome that all sounds great thank you so much for that Any other thoughts there? Questions? Yeah, is there any other documentation uh, op or open source documentation or guides where we can start like a uh, testing channel or it's not out there yet? Like for from the node perspective. Yeah, there is a lot of documentation. Uh, so they they built um really some really cool tools for like spinning up devnets and things of that nature. So uh, yeah, they're they're really taking deployment very seriously in terms of making sure there's adequate uh, you know adequate tooling to get started. Uh, so some of the, I, I believe a bunch of that is it is technically open source. It just hasn't all been brought together in a uh, uh, digestible way, and that's one thing I'm going to be kind of helping to do uh, first, getting it to uh, getting it to the initial um, uh, testers. And then from there, continuing to kind of publish and 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 keep all that knowledge in an accessible way. But yeah, they they've done quite a bit of work on making it a uh, you know a really easy system to kind of spin up your own uh, your own dev nets or test nets uh, for Shannon development. So. Good. I'd we'll love to see the, the documentation around it. Thank you. Excellent. I'm also looking forward to seeing, uh, we'll see about getting a, a testnet node up and running. There's a lot of things that we're trying to figure out about what's possible in the new environment. So it'd be nice to actually play with it in real terms. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we want to keep the comms, you know, transparent to the community. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have to work out exactly how, how this works because we we what we don't want is as excited as everyone is to join testnet what we don't want is having uh too many cooks in the kitchen when very specific things need to be tested so mm -hmm. that's why we're uh you know kind of working to start originally with with just 
one or two specific parties um, that uh, can help troubleshoot very specific things. And then we're going to be obviously progressing to a larger test net where uh, uh, once the node stuff is kind of taken care of, then lar a larger test net that folks can participate in. Cool. Okay. So it'll be progressive, but it'll be it'll be cool. It'll be cool, and we'll we're going to keep things as uh, transparent as possible, and and keep folks in the know in terms of yeah. what tools are available. Good morning. Good morning. You got it. Be sharp, unless you're uh, chatting. Please keep yourself on mute. Or we can assist you with that if needed. Up <laughs> and assist. <laughs> oh. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, if there's no other questions about that, then we are open right now to uh, any and all topics in regards to uh, the, the entire ecosystem, uh, including the technical stuff and or governance or any other questions that you might have. So if you have a question or a topic that you'd like to discuss, go ahead and come off mute and bring it up. Say my name. <laughs> Uh, I can chat real quick. I'll, sure. uh, I'll bring some um, So uh, there is a government governance vote going on to appoint Ben as a director. Um, I am personally voting against it, and it's nothing against Ben. Um, I would like to see a member of the community be part of the foundation. I think this is a golden opportunity for that. Um, I think that representation is sorely missing. Um, uh, I also do think that Dow it could be in a better state. I think Ben's done a lot of great work with respect to POPs uh, and sockets. Um, I personally disagree with the CREDS approach um, and the way that I think it's overly complicated, actually even more complicated than what we have now. Um, and I think that needs to be simplified. Um, so I am personally, you know, going out and saying publicly that I have already voted against this. Um, I am not going to be able to sway or convince all of you to do one way or the other, but I, if you feel like there's someone in the community that should have some form of representation um, or should represent this group of people um, in the foundation, um, then this is a great opportunity to do it. I think later this year, Jack will also be stepping down um, and there'll be another opportunity later uh, to uh, replace that seat as well. Uh, so yeah, and again, I apologize. This is very last minute. Um, I completely didn't even see that this vote was coming up. Uh, there wasn't really much communication around it or any conversation. Um, I, I tend to vote in favor of most things. I've only voted against a few things, but I, for me personally, when I was thinking about this last night, I was thinking about all of the conversations I have publicly and a lot of the ones I have privately. And I just, I have a just personal feeling that on the private side, um, there just needs to be someone that is more visible uh, representing the foundation as a director. Um, so if this vote fails to pass, I will uh, put up uh, a name for nomination uh, shortly thereafter, and we can have an actual discussion as well about that. Uh, I understand the weight that is carried by me publicly saying this. I'm not ignorant to any of this. Um, I don't expect you to agree with me or disagree with me. I just wanted to use this opportunity as a member of the community for the last three to four years and as an employee of Grove um, to kind of just say, this is where I publicly stand. Um, I don't expect all of Grove, of which we have four or five votes, to vote this way either or to vote at all. Um, but this is at least how I am voting. So, yeah. I certainly have some thoughts and feelings about that, but uh, I want to give a chance for some other folks to to provide some feedback. Zach, I saw you come off mute there real quick. Do you want to uh, add some thoughts there? I sure can. Um, so uh, I did put the vote in the chat if anybody wants to look at it. And our, I know you got a, Arthur. You got, I know you got a million things going on. Um, the proposal's been up for twelve days. It would be great to get that feedback in the forum. Uh, that kind of stuff, like you said, does sway votes, but gives people an opportunity to consider it and talk to other people before they make that. I want to I want to touch on two pieces here. One, I don't think this is a zero sum thing. Um, Nelson did step down. We do need somebody on the board uh, to replace him. And I think Ben is a great candidate for this, but it doesn't mean that we can't say, hey, we want to add another person in the next three weeks. My concern would be if we don't vote Ben in, this delays some of the things that need to get done. Um, 
and and really again like we're we're creating suggestions as to what we think is the right or the next step for this but like it's your dao arthur like you want to you want to expand the board to four more people let's have that combo and do it um and i totally agree with you that having the community you know like having shane step in and help with pnf and the protocol is like a huge win i think and having more community members who can come in and work with the board um or be a part of the board to do that would be awesome and i don't know if you've read the other I, it's another post that Dermot put out um, probably a couple of weeks ago as well. Just saying that we're really looking to bring strong technical leadership onto the board as well. So like the goal here is not to keep placing PNF people in on the board, but to like bring in people to fill those gaps. And I know you're aware of it. I'm super aware of it. Nobody at PNF is like blind to the the need there. Um, and so I guess what I'm what I'm saying is by not voting Ben in, it probably slows things down and makes this more complicated than it needs to be, as opposed to bringing Ben in and then also figuring out how we expand that board to include community members or other people. And we have had posts up there asking for that. And the final piece I want to just touch on, I see you going off mute as well, ads, is the creds thing. <laughs> um, as far as voting, it's actually like now that I'm deep in it, it's actually going to be much easier for people to get a vote. It is a complicated system, um, but once you have your vote, it should make it should make access to this a lot easier for general people, right? So, like if I'm just coming into the community, I should be able to come in and be a citizen and vote in the DAO pretty easily, and then it's weighted so that way I don't actually have a lot of sway compared to the people that are building and staking, right? Like you have to be more invested to have a stronger vote. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, I'd love to have the conversation about like, is the system itself not making sense or is it the tooling that we're using to get there that's confusing or cumbersome? I know it's taken a while, but we are working with, you know, four or five external parties to get this done, including Snapshot, which if anybody has a contact at Snapshot that we can put some pressure on them to um, help us with the technical piece, please DM me. So there's just a bunch of pieces in place on top of everything else that's happening. I think at this point I've talked for too long, but um, Ads, I'll pass it over to you. Um, I would just, um, I guess, echo some of those sentiments. So I hugely appreciate the transparency. I, I really value the fact that you are happy to kind of share that perspective and that point of view openly. I think that's really, really valuable. I would share... Zach's view that it would be great to get that actually on the forum so that it can be discussed. Um, you know, we are supposed to be having all of these conversations in the open, and and I do really appreciate you driving that. Um, there are maybe two other additional pieces of context that I feel might be helpful for people on this call. Um, so the first is that in addition to the technical leadership piece that that Zach mentioned. There's also a proposal that's been up on the forum around board observers, uh, one of whom we would hope to have appointed by the community um, to represent the, the community. So there is that additional piece that is that is also there. And I do echo, um, I had a wonderful chat with Shane earlier today, and I do echo the positive sentiments about that. I think that is something we should certainly be doing more of, and it is hugely valuable. Um, I would just say with regards to this specific role that Nelson had a brought a particular skill set into the directors that, you know, from my perspective, having joined only what, seven months ago, um, where he he has managed a lot of the financial side of things, the budgeting, the accounts. Um, ben has picked that up and he does have a strong skill set for that. Um I think that has been part of the consideration. And um, as Zach says, it doesn't have to be a zero sum game, but I think that was part of the reason we felt it was a really nice continuity um, in terms of budgeting and and accounting and, and it fit really well with what he has done. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I felt like that context might be helpful for people. But Jinx, you wanted to say something as well. Well, I... Do you mind if I jump in real quick to just to respond? Just it'll take 30 seconds and then Jinx, I'll hand it off to you. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I appreciate both of you speaking up as well. Um, the reason I didn't post anything on online is I just had the feeling last night and it didn't, because I just read it last night. And I know it's been up for 12 days, but part of the problem is that lack of the communication on what's going on in the forum. I got an email that I think I snoozed or something and I finally looked at it and I was like, oh, wow, this is actually up for vote already. Probably should read through it a little more. Um, 
and that's on me. But the fact that there was no communication also speaks to the fact that there's just no incentive or stake and not enough people, but people are not engaged, right? And if people don't feel incentivized or engaged or just voting just to vote yes, because that's what most people tend to do with most of the proposals that we have, except for inflation, I feel like there's something fundamentally wrong with how the DAO is operating. Um, That being said, um, I don't think it's a zero sum game, but I also think a board observer is not the right role for this individual. I actually want a voting member on this team to help with decisions. And as it comes from me writing something publicly, I'm not sure if I will. This recording probably should stand enough because I have way too much internal context. And as you all know, I talk with you both weekly. I have, I know the next six months of what's supposed to happen. Um, I don't know what is worth sharing or not sharing. I don't want to unravel your plans, future plans. I don't want to share things that are not meant to be shared just yet. Um, so I much rather abstain. And if anything, I can feed my comments to other members um, who are on this call and they can write their own propositions based on what, what to do. And that, that's kind of just where my stance is. It's just, I, I, it's really hard for me to commingle or not mingle what's private and what's public information right now. All right, Jinx, go ahead. Thank you. This one's tough. I mean, it's I I I struggled with this quite a bit. I think Ben has done a fantastic job. I think he stepped up in a lot of ways, uh, and I can see how this would, you know, sort of be an expected outcome that he, uh, you know, transitions and is promoted up into the director role based on the the work that he's done. And so I, I take it very seriously, and, and I don't take lightly the outcome in that I'm choosing to vote no on this because it has nothing at all to do with Ben's performance or who he is as a person or whether or not I like him. All of those things are positive. Uh, But I do think that we have had a a lack of mature experience from larger chains, larger protocols in the foundation for a while. And I think that this is an opportunity that there probably should have been a greater discussion around, can we pull in some outside talent from, you know, a top 50 chain to address some of the places where we have shortcomings? And I don't think hiring someone like Mateo, for instance, is the answer to that when senior leadership is the one who creates, formulates, and assures the execution of strategy. I think that it needs to be a senior leader. It needs to be a director. Um, And so that's, and for only that reason, that's why I'm voting against this proposal. Any other thoughts on that topic? Yeah, uh, my, so, you know, I'm just kind of processing uh, like most of this now for the first time. so I'm just shooting from the hip here, but uh, you know, I think a it it seems like a director uh, kind of position. Maybe there should be more of a structure uh, for community engagement. So I I understand where where Arthur's coming from in terms of uh, you know, there's not a there, there's not a lot of comms or, or a lot of things happening around that. Um, to be fair, you know, it's it's hard to know exactly when, you know, if something's posted on the forum, when when and how do you make it a bigger thing so that more people see it if it's already on the forum, which ultimately is our, you know, our 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 place of canon, our our, our place of proof. So, uh, but you know, maybe something to think about in the future is with directors um you know having something where it's a meet you know meet the candidate you know or meet the person right where it's a separate call uh you know and people can ask questions and things of that nature i think what was you know just shooting from the hip here i think what uh i think what is missing in this proposal is kind of what the the vision of this director um Kind of is, and I actually really appreciate the context that ads just gave in terms of uh, he has a strong acumen with the kind of the 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 financial uh, managing business side. Um, uh, but all of that would have been, I you know, I think that could be well represented 
in kind of a, you know, meet the director where, you know, ultimately it, that is able to be represented, but then also the elements of like the larger vision of pocket or the larger vision of these aspects of uh, the ecosystem or something like that. So, um, you know, we kind of have that, that vision, that, you know, that contact point beyond just the forum. Um, so just something to think of, uh, you know, maybe it might be worth putting, uh, putting in a, uh, uh, you know, a, like a proposal on the forum on maybe how uh, directors uh, could be, you know, like this process could be better done in a public fashion. Um, but uh, so, so anyways, that's just talking more about the, you know, taking some of what Arthur said and, and uh, uh, trying to put it into, you know, something that might be a little more practical. Uh, I, I, I really have a hard time trying to go through these kind of discussions way after the fact. So like after it's already been up for a while and it's already up to vote, um, you know, there is a part of me that feels like if, if people are going to be silent un until the vote, um, that creates a, a really hard way to, to organize and it creates a hard way for people to contribute because like my background, I've worked with other DAOs and each month I did not know if I was going to be getting, you know, getting the votes or not because there's so many, you know, there's so many games, social games happening around votes all the time. And that's just the nature of DAOs. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I do have a hard time with, with, uh, bringing up strong objections after uh, kind of just during the vote, because that's how that's that just adds more complexity to then voting where discussions aren't happening at the right time and they're happening later on. Now, I understand what Arthur was saying in terms of uh, there wasn't uh, there, there could have been more uh, more opportunities for people to participate outside of just the forum notification uh, and totally open to addressing that. But I yeah I procedurally it it is hard to to swallow trying to do all this right now uh, in the in the middle of the vote so th those are my thoughts Zach yeah I mean technically it's the end of the vote I think we have like one day left to vote um, and I hear you Shane on all that and I also I hear you Arthur it, here's here's my take on communication is like we do a lot of communication. A lot of stuff goes on the forum. We do some announcements. And because we are protocol layer, right, we actually do announcements from people who are building on the, the protocol from other projects in the ecosystem. I personally feel like there's a shitload of noise, right? Like there's so much going on that there's no way you could possibly tune in. And adding more information is not going to solve that problem. And I don't think it's unique to us in any way. Like I had the same thing when I worked at Filecoin. It's like, we'll do another video. We'll do another Twitter space. We'll do another this. And it doesn't, it doesn't solve the problem of like, how do you get the important information to you? And, and the, the truth here is, Arthur, what you care about is going to be really different than what I care about and what a person who's like just joining the ecosystem and wants to get paid to do some sockets, you know? Um, and so I'm at the point where you know, we can do our best to do roundups. Pocket News does that. We can do our best to do forum posts. We do that. I can call it out in every community call, which I do in the first five minutes. But, you know, I know that people zone out during our community calls too. You just kind of listen in and you try to figure out what's important. So it's just, I, I just don't know if there's a solvable thing to that communication. And I can certainly add, maybe maybe we have jinx. Maybe every time we open a new... Um, we open a new vote. We have a dedicated space in this call to discuss that vote in a public forum um, as soon as it gets posted. And that might maybe that'll give us a little bit more room to um, get to the bottom of this before we get to the end of the vote. But I'm certainly open to that. Sure. Totally. And, and I'm really like it, it feels weird to be able to, you know, we're not doing a great job with our governance if nobody's engaged. And that's a that's a problem of. The protocol being around for so long and people having come into the ecosystem and dropped off, right? Like I just DM'd 70 people today to be like, hey, please vote. And if we're lucky, we'll get 20 people to vote, right? So that means, in my opinion, that we really do need to upgrade our governance system in some way. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm going to get on a soapbox here, but we're really open to ways to communicate better. If you prefer to get it in video format, live calls, email, newsletter, whatever it is, like 
let us know. We can add another way to the to the system and we can give you the news you like to you want to hear the way you want to hear it, I guess. I know for me, uh, having a Telegram channel feed of social stuff allows me to stay on top of uh, pocket related tweets and such. Um, setting up something similar for uh, the forum might be good. People could subscribe there if they like. I mean, honestly, maybe part of it is is the fact that we have too many places to go to get the communication, you know. Yep. Um, I wish there was a way we could close down the forum and just use Discord, and I would be very open to that if people wanted to. I know Discord now has um, like an actual forum threading feature, but you know, when I suggested that, people were very upset <laughs> right off the bat because they don't like the way it looks or it's new. So, you know, we always solve one problem by creating another one. Yeah, the thread is also handy. requires software. I mean, you can use it on the web, but the forum was always considered to be open um, yeah. or eat more accessible at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, threads have their own nuance. nuance. Um, I know there's a forum feature as well. Um, I think going back to something one of you had said about threads very quickly, the fact that you need to hire five consultants is a problem. That is a fundamental issue here um, that I have with, with that. The fact that consultants would need to be hired for everything, even for Discord, is a problem. I think there's a lot of mismanagement of funds at times. Um, I, I, and so that is part of where this vote is coming from as well. Again, there's a lot more that I have on the internal side that really is not worth airing here or in any capacity. But I, I have lived through absolute hell for the last year and a half. And I see this as an opportunity to get um, people who have lived through hell as well an opportunity to have an actual say on how to right the ship a little bit on on, uh, on the foundation side as well, because I don't think every, I think a lot of things are going right. I don't think everything is going right. Um, and I, this conversation we're having about the DAO in the forum, we had this conversation with Jack and Ming a year ago. And the fact that we're here again means that there's fundamental issues with the DAO and how it operates and how it's maintained. And again, and not a nod on Jack or, I don't have a solution. Again, I'm not, I can only do so many things per day, but. I don't have a solution here. And I have been part of a few DAOs as well. And I fundamentally have had issues with all of them. But this is the one that is closest to my heart right now because this is where I work. Um, and this is why I bring this up. Go ahead, Jinx. Well, and, you know, I mean, the question of which things are prioritized and, and is another factor of that. You know, I mean, it's it kind of sucks in my opinion that this is the proposal where some of these things are coming out, but I think it's, it's the closest that we've had to a sort of evaluation of a foundational strategy during this time. And, you know, it's for no votes. I think it's really more of, of, a, you know, a, a, a signal that, Hey, you know, we would like to see, some different things occurring along the way that that aren't occurring and i know that it, a lot of that doesn't really have a lot to do with the folks that have you know joined recently or who have implemented strategies recently i mean I'd, i i think ads has done a fine job in in uh, uh devising marketing strategies and such i mean ben's done a great job of of the nuts and bolts stuff behind the scene I, it, these are not indictments of those people you know but things like the forum issue still being an issue a year later and and you know a number of other things along the way where uh, you know maybe the important things haven't been prioritized and combined with you know, there are just specifically some some skills that I really think are missing in the foundation leadership. And and that's not a, you know, a slight against them. That's just an evaluation of the people that are in place there. A senior technology engineer as a director, I think, is critical for a blockchain protocol. We don't have that, you know, and those kinds of things give me pause. And, and I think that this kind of a proposal is just an opportunity to sort of express that. Um, I hear you totally on that, Jinx. And I think that, you know, we've expressed that we know we need technical leadership here. And I think, you know, Shane's a good interim step towards that to getting more technical expertise, especially community um, specific to pocket. So 
I maybe what I'd like to say is like stepping back from this, like it seems like there are other issues that we're using this appointment to discuss, which I think it, it's great that it's bringing it up, but um, these aren't necessarily directly related to like Ben being appointed as a director. There are still director things that need to get done. And by not having been there, that puts us in a place where we don't have anybody to do that. You're looking at a board of just Jack and Dermot and Jack is part-time. That's going to make things, in my biased opinion, it's going to make things slower and harder for everybody if there's only one full-time person plus Jack doing it, right? Um, it puts more weight on Dermot's shoulders as well. So this doesn't have to be a um, like the end of the conversation. Like Getting Ben in, I think, solves a need we have. And then going from here, prioritizing the discussion around how do we get more technical leadership or more, um, maybe it's just a matter of more transparency into what's going on that you all need. Because um, I, I don't think anything you're saying is revelationary, revel whatever the word is for us. Like We know that it's missing. Um, and and if if this is a strong signal that we need to do something different and not appoint them, like I just really would love that in the forum or in somewhere where we can actually have the discussion and start figuring out like what the next step is. Because this conversation is great, but I'd like to invite in the other forty five voters that aren't in this community call right now. Absolutely. And Arthur, on your DAO comments, like I'm with you, man, like DAOs are pretty imperfect in a lot of ways. Um, the, the primary problem with DAOs is they're reliant on everybody in it to step up and do some of this work. And like PNF has gotten saddled with, you're responsible for doing these things. But like right now, specifically right now, we have four full-time people. Is that correct? I think there's only four of us. And then we have Jack, you know, in some capacity and Shane coming in. There's a lot of things that need to get done with four people who are, I mean, ultimately we're all human and limited in what we can do and what we know. And so we're reliant on people in the DAO to come forward and to offer solutions and work with us on these things. And it sometimes can look like we're a shadow organization, but like, I think there's some, some old blood that I found, like there's something that has happened previously where people are not trusting. And I'm feeling the repercussions of that, where people immediately jump to a conclusion that is mm. not true. It could just be human nature. Sure. I very much so am open to having a conversation with anybody here about how we fix things. And I think I've been really fair with you know, your complaint about like we're putting funds in bad places. Like I'm letting some sockets go that I don't know if they'll be successful. And I don't think they'll be successful in order to give community members opportunities to show that they're going to step up and do something impactful. And from there, we can dial it in. But I, I haven't learned all of Ming's lessons, right? I haven't learned all of Jack's previous lessons either. So I'm very open to the community of people to provide guidance and support, to make suggestions, to meet with me, um, and including you, Arthur. Like we've had a couple of conversations, but we don't have them regularly either. And so I guess I just want to I want to signal to everybody in the community that we're we're not um, trying to be in an ivory tower and you know, do whatever we want to do. We want Pocket to be successful with all of your help. And we're just trying to do a good job of it as humans who are fallible. So 100%. I mean, and and, and to be clear, I mean, Zach, you and Ads both have, have I think, done a, a hell of a job. I mean, it's, I, I was, you know, notably uh, a bit concerned about the shift in community transition. Um, Ming is, you know, someone who's been through the trenches with me and, and is a friend. Um, his transition from PNI to PNF and then away from PNF was not in any way graceful. Um, you know, so I, I didn't really have a good sense of where you'd be coming in from that. But I, you've you've done an absolutely fantastic job of, of outreach, of being available, of engaging with the community in meaningful ways. I mean, none of this is an indictment. Of, of your performance uh, uh, from a community aspect, you know, that's, and I do want to make sure that that's clear, but I think that, you know, when we talk about, you know, are those things relevant to this proposal? Uh, one of the things when we've, when we voted to fundamentally not just give PNF full autonomy, but also to fund it uh, and endow it with some specific powers in meaningful ways, um, one of the things that was discussed at the time was, you know, listen, the, in a representative model, the community only has so many ways to express dissatisfaction, right? And 
there had been from that time concerns that the foundation itself was somewhat insular in, na in nature and and like you said perhaps a little bit of an ivory tower perspective um and with ben um being uh you know nominated for appointment to director not that that he's not a great nomination i i think fundamentally he is um but it it certainly is in keeping with this perspective of rubber stamping someone into you know sort of the the foundation directorships uh general strategy which you know uh, a lot of people just haven't really been terribly satisfied with and so without maybe some outside thought without some challenge to the existing orthodoxy how does that change you know uh, it's maybe that's a different proposal but I, I don't think any other proposal would be any less messy you know because it would still be dealing with a lot of these same issues and some of it would probably just get pushed to the side, like Jack's on the way out, Jack's part-time. Jack's the executive director of the foundation. Is that a part-time job? You know, I mean, that's there's there's some things here that have just been hard to swallow. And as much as I was prepared to vote yes, because I think Ben has been a, a credit to the foundation, I just had to call it here as a stopping point to be like, hey, let's, I don't know, I think we need to think about this a little more. Um, so I think, I mean, I think this is a really valuable discussion. Thank you, Jinx, for the kind words. Um, but I, I do also really value the, the honest opinions. And, and I think you know, clearly this is something we need to talk about and find the right forum for. Um, the, the, the thing that's coming up for me is this, um, back to my corporate days, is this idea of a shareholders meeting. I saw a suggestion about a Dow day. And we can certainly do that. So we are increasingly hosting Twitter spaces around some of the core elements that we're thinking about from a, a governance perspective where we're bringing in experts from across across the ecosystem. We can definitely do that in a different place in a more, con, you know, in a more um, compressed time frame. Um, you know, we, we, yeah, that's definitely something we can look at. The other, the other thing that I'm thinking of is, you know, back in, Diageo, for example, the the exec had to come to a shareholders meeting where they would outline their strategy, having published something similar to our transparency reports, and and take questions and have discussions and face challenge. And um, I wonder if you know, I mean, th this clearly isn't the forum for that because you've only got Zach and I here. Um, but whether you know that kind of a structure where maybe we just We've got a community call coming up. Maybe we just say, look, you know, let's make that community call effectively your meeting to challenge us and bring questions and concerns and and tell us what skills you think are missing. Um, you know, we hear you on the we completely hear you on the technical technical perspective, technical director. That's actually something that's already, you know, um underway. Like we are looking for that talent with, you know, serious chops and big protocol experience and an understanding of of our our industry ideally um our sector but also you know really strong technical skills um to be that kind of you know to bring that perspective into the foundation i think that's 100 percent valid um but i'm sure there are other things we're missing so i just i guess you know i don't want to try to wrap this up or <laughs> seem like i'm trying to do that but i wonder maybe if we if we need that kind of forum, if you guys feel like that kind of forum would be helpful. I mean, I really appreciated the uh, some of the debates, like literal debates <laughs> that were structured. And I, I actually believe did Ben, Ben helped organize some of those uh, when he first came in, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, or maybe it was someone else, but anyways, uh, this, this was what, maybe like two years ago or something, but, um, you know, where, where they would, you know, pick a topic and then pick someone to, uh, you know, methodically represent one side and then someone else to methodically represent another side. Uh, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed those. Uh, I, I, but, you know, I, I might be the only one there. May, maybe there's a, a deeper reason why they didn't continue. But regardless, uh, kind of going off what Ad said, yeah, I I, I think, a uh, you know, just having a dedicated time 
uh, for that would 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 be awesome. Um, and you know, where is maybe a little more structured in terms of, hey, we're going to focus on this thought, you know, pre come with your existing questions uh, on specifically this topic. Um, because I do feel like most community calls, you kind of show up in your, you know, you you maybe know, hey, we're going to talk about this, but uh, you're you're more uh, you're you're not a participant because there's already a, a kind of a, a scripted presentation for you. So ones that were a little more open, um, yeah, I think would would definitely be very helpful. And where the purpose is to come with your questions. Jinx, a thing I heard you say was um, executive director, part time job, and so like the I guess the the other piece that's hitting me here is like it seems like a lot of people have opinions that are being discussed in places that are not here, right? Like they're they're not public, or I'm not seeing them. And to Arthur's point, maybe there's just so much noise that I'm not in the right room at the right time. Um, we we can't do better if um, these things are things that everybody's thinking but not expressing. And I know it's challenging in a DAO place where you know your reputation is your name and and what you say. But like, um, I think those sorts of things need to be expressed by somebody who's willing to do it. You know, Jinx, you carry a lot of clout. Arthur, you run an entire company on the network. Like, I think these sorts of things need to be expressed in public so we can at least address them or. Put it on our like, oh shit, that's a really good point. And again, there's four of us and we didn't think about how this optics look. So again, I don't have a solution to that either, but um, the conversations that are being held in private probably need to be more public so so we can think about those things and solve them. And well, then, I mean, to Arthur's point about information, right? I'm I'm probably one of the most information absorbing people in the entire community. And I hadn't put together that um, Jack was only acting in a part-time capacity. Now I understood that he was planning on leaving, uh, you know, beginning of summer or so, but I didn't realize he was working part-time. Uh, and I was apparently very late to understanding that Mateo was leaving and, and Shane was stepping up to sort of take on some of his responsibilities. And I'm somebody who's living this all day, every single day. There's a lot of information to follow. And a lot mm -hmm. of this isn't necessarily private conversations versus public conversations as much as when, what information hits who. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, this comes back to like, maybe we need to take a step back and figure out how we start streamlining some of these conversations. And instead of having as many calls, maybe we have fewer calls, more targeted or something like that. So. If anybody has any experience with um, internal comms like that, like please jump into my DMs. Beautiful. Well, it is top of the hour, um, so I would suggest that we take the the continuation of this conversation to the forum. Um, uh, anyone else who wants to add their thoughts out there. Um, I will uh, absolutely formalize my my thoughts on on this and my position on where I've taken. I'm sorry that it wasn't in earlier, but um, uh, to be perfectly honest, I just it hadn't really all sunk in. I think until yesterday, so it's you know it's that's just one of those things. But uh, I'll add my thoughts there. I hope everyone else does the same, and it's something that I think bears further discussion. But. As always, we'll see you again next week. Same time, same channel.